All right, gang, let's talk about Python and programming in Unit 2. So there's some concepts that we need to cover. And the concepts involve terms like constants, variables, strings. Now, a constant is a value that doesn't change. And in Python, we don't really have constants like we would in other programming languages, but we still want to use a constant. And that's a value that doesn't change over time. A variable is something that we expect it will change over time and we plan accordingly. A string is, if you compare it to uh, a railroad train, a sequence of cars connected together. Each car represents a character and a sentence, which we'd call a string of characters. Now, even though we may have a space in between letters within a sentence, that space still has value, and we need to store it somewhere. And the representation that we have is uh, my analogy of a railroad car. So the first character, let's say my name, and my name, let's say it was John, J-O-H-N, that's four characters. The first one we give an index of zero, that's where we start out at at zero. Second one, one. The third one, two. And the fourth character, three. So that's four characters in a row. And they're joined together to create a string of characters. Now there's two kinds of strings that we deal with. One is what we call a string literal constant means what you see within the quotation marks will be literally displayed exactly as you see it. It's constant, it does not change, and it is a string of characters. So it's a string literal constant. The other kind of string that we have is a string variable. What's stored in that variable will change from one run of the program to the next, depending on user input. So we're going to start out with a basic program calculating somebody's salary. And as you see, I've got a little bit of an algorithm written out. The annual salary will remain $1,250. So that's a constant. The number of deductions is two. Both those are constants, they don't change. I'll show you in a little bit some of the things we can do to set a value aside as being a constant and we expect no change in it. Uh, the program is going to calculate sales tax based on a 6.25% rate, federal tax at a 28% rate, and there will be a 2.5% dependent deduction for child support. Uh, the take-home pay will be displayed to the user at the end. Now, at each point, as we do perform a calculation, we need to output what that value is. So, logically, the first one we'll do is create a Raptor flowchart for this. Now, in Raptor, I've already started this. We've got our starting point. I add an assignment symbol. And in the assignment symbol, I go ahead and I set a value to a variable and this one since it's all uppercase we understand that to be a constant it's not going to change um, I'll show you a little bit in Python what what happens when we set something as all uppercase so I gave it a value of one thousand two hundred fifty dollars I say done and now it's there did the same thing with the number of dependents State tax is a calculation of salary multiplied by 0 0.065. I'm just taking what we had in the algorithm and plugging it into our flowchart. And step by step, the sequence does matter. If I refer to salary here, before, if this took place, before I declared and initialized the variable salary or the constant salary, then the program would have a logic flaw and say, look, you're trying to reference something that doesn't exist yet. 
and it would stop right then and there. So after I've calculated sales tax, I put or output this string, state tax colon and the number sign or dollar sign, and I concatenate it in the state tax value. So that'll be output there. Same thing happens here. We calculate federal tax. We've got another output. Calculate dependent deduction. Another output. We will calculate the total withholding, which is sale tax plus federal tax plus dependent deduction. And then we'll also calculate take home pay, which is salary less the total withholding. I'll output salary, explain what it is that it's salary with a dollar sign before I output the number. <coughs> and then I'll also have the take home pay displayed at the end. Now if I run this, yep, run it a few times to make sure how it comes out. It gave me the sales tax or state tax, federal tax, dependents, and salary. And there's the take home pay. So the logic does work. The next step for us is to take that code and or take that logic and convert it into Python code. So rather than me sitting here typing the code, I've got code and I'm going to let's open up our Python shell. I'll say file, a new file. Right. So file. Let me save it. We'll have to give it a name. Let's call it sample. It's a sample of code. I'll call it sample one. Let's save. Okay. Let's save it. There we go. So we've got sample one. And on that same page that I have that algorithm, I've got some code in here. So let's take this Python code and we will put it into our Python application. So let's talk about what we see here in Python. The first line is always going to be a comment explaining what it is you're doing who you are, the date that you wrote the program, and what the program is for. Is it for a course, a specific course. Right? That way when you submit it, the professor knows exactly who it came from, when it was created, what assignment it's for, what course it's for. So that's all stated at the very beginning of the program. Salary, I've got it all uppercase, uppercase characters because it is a constant. Num dependence could also be a constant. <clears throat> now, salary does change over time, year after year, but I want to just show what happens if we have all uppercase. And I decided I want to dictate that it's a float. I go to run this program. It tells me I've got a problem here. Float, that's a variable. Variable, it's got to start with lowercase. So the fact that I've got all uppercase, Python knows that I'm dealing with a constant, but we don't have uh, a label like we do with float integer, where we actually typecast it as being a specific uh, data type. Right. So we've got this salary. It's a constant, it has value, dependence has value. Now we've got a little comment explaining what's taking place here. State tax equals, and now we're assigning a value to state tax, salary times 0 0.065. Implicitly, this will be a float, a floating decimal point variable. But we don't have to say it because just by the fact that we have a fractional number here, dictates that that will be a float. Now I'm running 3.6.0 so by doing that I have to convert 
my variables to strings before I can use the print function. And the print function I have to, in this version, pass whatever I'm passing to it in parentheses. So I pass state tags to the string function to convert it to a string. And then I pass that value concatenated together with this string literal constant to the print function. And that'll be our output. Similar which takes takes place in the next couple of sections of the code. We've got total withholding. That's, we've talked about it before. It will just add up all the deductions and assign that value to the variable. The data type is inherited. So if I'm adding a bunch of floats, even if one of them's a float, that will make total withholding a float. We'll deduct total withholding from salary to come up with take home pay. And then we'll have a couple of output lines. So let's go see that this runs. And we see that we've got state tax at $81.25. Federal tax at $350 and 000. So it's a long decimal point. The precision is not defined. So the program will dictate whatever precision in the output is. Uh, we can override this by using a little bit of code. We'll modify our code so that we format the output and set the precision at two decimal places. Okay, So at this point, our math works. It's not pretty output, but it's functional. So I can take my code, and here I've got another block of code ready to go so you're not having to sit here and watch me type code. Go ahead and paste it over that. And so you see what's taking place. It's the same code that we had previously. But the variation is that that string, or sales tax was passed to string before, to convert it to a string to be output. Before I convert it to a string, I want to set the precision on state tax. So there's a format function that exists. All I have to do is invoke it and pass it state tax that I want to be modified or set the precision. So I pass it state tax, comma, and I also have to pass it what the precision will be. And I've got in single quotes point 0.2f. Point 0.2 floating precisions. So by changing that in the different instances where I've done it. So there's one here, one here, changed it there. Anything that had a floating decimal point in the output, I went ahead and changed it. Now you see what we had before was 81.25, 350, and that long precision. Now it's cleaner. It looks like normal money we would see. Now that's something that once we learn how to deal with floating decimal points, we want to set precision so that we don't end up with these long fractional numbers. It looks clean. So our output does look much cleaner by just applying that format function. We'll deal with little functions as we go, getting used to each aspect of programming. So I'll see you in the next module.